Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be building three very simple Python projects that you can go build right now, right after watching this video. And the best thing about these particular projects is that they're not some tic-tac-toe or some useless wank like that. These projects are actually going to be interesting and useful. What gets me excited is actually building something that I might use myself that's going to have some practical use for me. So that is why I have chosen these particular projects. And also in this video, you're not only going to learn how to do these projects and also get access to my source code down below in the description. But if you watch till the end, I'm also going to teach you the basics of shell scripting and how you can use it to run these programs in just a couple of clicks directly from your terminal window. But my real goal with this video is to show you just how versatile Python is and just how much you can do with very few lines of code. And that is why Python is my favorite beginner friendly language because you could just do so much with it, which will keep you motivated to keep learning. But well, let's get started. The first project we are gonna be building is an image editor. Now you might think that in order to edit great looking photos, you need something like Photoshop. Think again, because all you actually need is Python. Let me show you how. This is really great library in Python. It is this one and I'll leave the documentation down below in the description so you can like figure out what else to do besides the things that I'm gonna teach you how to do. Essentially the way you install it is with this command and we're just gonna copy that. And I already have it installed so it's not gonna like do it for me but essentially that is how you install it. We're gonna start with some imports. Then we're gonna define a folder to which we are gonna add some photos that we want to edit and we're also gonna define a folder where we want the edited photos to go once they are edited. We're going to define these as variables just like that. So let's say I have some sexy images of myself, which I want to edit to look a bit better. Essentially, if I want to make a new Instagram post out of these, I might want to edit them a bit. Usually I would do this in like Photoshop. If you're using Python, it's going to be much easier and much faster, as you will see. And now to access all of these photos, the magic of Python is that you can apply all of the same edits to all of the photos in this folder automatically. And to do that, we're gonna apply some magic. Just kidding, just some Python code. For file name in os.lister with path. So essentially all this piece of code does is access all of these files, all of these images in this folder, and I'll apply all the code which we're gonna write to it. First, to open this image using this library, we're gonna go image.open, and we're gonna do this. This is an F string to Make sure we accident the whole file. You can just copy this exact one. Essentially now this variable holds this image object, which is gonna allow us to do some edits to it. For example, what we can do is sharpening. We're gonna go edit equals image dot, and I need to filter. And inside we're gonna go image filter dot sharpen. We're gonna need to do a bit of trickery. Essentially we need to clean out the name, edit dot save, and I had this saved and I'm gonna do like that. And essentially this thing is going to apply some edits to all of these photos and save the edited images in this edited image folder. You ready? We go Python three photo editor.py. And now we have sharpened versions of these images. It's probably not very clear. And for some reason he rotates them to the left. So actually what we need to do is to this one, we need to do dot, I believe it's convert and a capital L inside. I don't just know this by heart. I learned this by looking at the documentation and the things that I'm doing here are just examples that you can do. By going into the documentation, you can find a bunch of other types of edits that you might want to do. This is just examples, so if you do that, well, actually, no, I forgot. <laughs> to convert to L is actually the way you convert it to grayscale. I actually kind of like that, so we'll leave that. The way you did rotation was by doing, well, rotate, not convert. And we're gonna go, I believe you do minus 90 in this instance. Obviously. And now they are the right way around and they are also a black and white. Then you could obviously do a lot of other things. What I like to do to my images is increase the contrast. What you would do is define a factor to be 1.5, for example, answer equals image enhance dot contrast, which just creates this object again with like contrast editing capabilities or something like that. And inside we would edit and now we have this enhancer ob object and this we're gonna go edit equals enhancer dot enhance with this factor that we defined 
And now this new image should have some more contrast. We're gonna see if this works. If you open these, you can see that these are a lot more contrasty. And basically what you could do, if these are the exact edits that you would want to do to all of your photos which you're posting on Instagram, for example, what you can just do is copy them to this one folder, just run this program and automatically everything is gonna be applied. You don't need to like manually edit every photo anymore ever again. Pretty cool, let's move on to the next project. This next one is a YouTube video downloader. Now let's say you're going on a trip, for example, you're going on a road trip or you're going on a flight where you're not gonna have access to internet, yet you still wanna be able to watch internet make coder videos while you're on your trip or maybe some other YouTubers, I guess. How do you solve this problem? Well, what you could do is sign up to YouTube Premium and pay YouTube like, I don't know, what is like $10 a month to be able to download videos to your computer. Or you can code like 15 lines of Python code and simply download all the videos that you wanna download to your computer for completely free. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. What we're gonna do is, in a, again, we're gonna be using a Python library. The library we're gonna be using here is called PyTube. We're gonna copy, install PyTube like this. I already have it. And from PyTube, we're gonna import YouTube. And I believe it's actually YouTube, like that. Then we're gonna go from sys import org. So the way I want to be able to run this program is just from the command line, I want to be able to run this program name as well as the link to the YouTube video which I want to download. The way we're gonna be able to access the link from the command line in a Python code is using this argv built-in library. What this means is that essentially argv takes all of the things that you input into the command line when you run this program. Essentially, the first argument is always gonna be the program name. So that's why we don't wanna access this one because this would just out output the name of this program. Argv1 is going to be the first command line argument which we give when we run this program. So that is how we're gonna be able to access it. And then we're gonna to need to create this YouTube ob object from yt equals YouTube. And I believe I need to put this link inside of it. So it's gonna be create this YouTube object from this link. And basically, first, let's just try to print some information about this YouTube video which we want to download. For example, we want to print the title of the video just to see that it works properly. Title equals, and we could go yt dot title like this like this right yeah and then we might also want to print the number of views that that video has right now views colon and the way we access that is just quite the dot views i believe yep seems to work and let's just see what happens so we're gonna go python 3 yt downloader and i believe i need to put this in quotation marks just like this and just like that, it works. It shows the title of the video as well as the current views of that video. Pretty cool. Okay, so now if we want to download this video, what do we actually do? Well, it's very simple. It's actually only two lines of code. Let's say we're gonna just define a variable called yt equal to yt dot streams to get highest resolution. Essentially what this does is because there's obviously multiple different streams of the video that you can download. You can download the 4K version or you can download the 360p version if you've got potato internet. Essentially this function here ensures that it's gonna download the highest version of the video possible. So in this case, I believe there's a 4K version. There should be a 4K version available of that video. And then we just go yd.download. And then we need to input the folder to which we want to download this video. Usually use this program myself when I'm editing these YouTube videos and I want to include some clips from either my own YouTube videos or some other YouTube videos. And I usually like to put them inside this kind of folder right here. And you're obviously just gonna input whatever folder you want your videos to go to. And then we're gonna see if this works. It's gonna download. And you see that it's sort of waiting. It's waiting for the video to download and Looks like nothing went wrong. Now we're gonna go into this folder on my computer right here. It's right here, YouTube downloads, and would you look at that, it's right there. This video is now downloaded into my computer. Pretty cool again. Let's move on to the next one. By the way, at this point, if you're finding this video useful, a like on this video down below in the description would be highly helpful because it shows YouTube that this video is actually half decent and it actually makes the YouTube algorithm show this video to more people. So if you could just take two seconds to go down there and like the video, I would be highly appreciative of that. And as a reward for doing that, here's a picture of a cute cat. 
Okay, now to the last project, which is also very exciting. What we're gonna be doing is a simple PDF merger. So for example, when I was in university, a lot of the times I needed to combine multiple PDFs into a single file. And the way I would do it is that there's a lot of these web-based PDF mergers where I need to upload my PDFs into this website and it would like take some time to like merge them and then output this new file. But now whenever I need to do it, I just use my own Python script, which took me like five minutes to code. And it's much, much easier, especially when at the end of the video, I show how to actually run all of these just from your terminal window using shell scripting. But first let's code this up in Python. Python. What we're going to need to install here is another library. This time it's called, I believe it's Py, Py PDF 2 That's the one. And we're going to import it from import Py PDF 2 Then we're going to import sys and let's start coding. Now over here, I've got these two pretty disgusting looking PDFs from my university days. Oh God. I'm so glad I never have to read stuff like this again, but essentially let's say I'm still an economics student at university and need to combine these two files into one file to upload it as an assignment or whatever. For file in OS list dir, and we're gonna import OS as well. And the way we're gonna access the current directory is by going os.cur dir, like this. And we're gonna just gonna print file to see that it's working. Actually not like this, obviously like this. And then obviously we need to check that the file is actually a PDF. So that if file ends with .pdf, then we want to access the file and do some magic to it. And just like that, we can see that it is indeed working. And now we can just merge them. Essentially the way we do it is we create this merger object by going pypdf2 dot pdf file merger right there and inside we don't need to put anything this creates this merger object which we can now do some magic to to merge these files and all we do is two lines of code we go merger append file not style file just like that and then we need to write these into one combined file that actually saves it as we go merger I believe it's bright and we just need to give it a name and the name we're going to give it to is combined BS uni docs dot PDF do like this and let's see if this works. Let's see if I made any mistakes. I made mistakes. Let's see what mistakes I made. Yeah, we want to define this before we do any of this other stuff. We want to define this object right here up here. Okay, it does look like it worked. And yeah, again, I will leave the documentation to this library in the description if you wanna do other stuff with PDFs. But this is just a very basic way. It's exactly, it's 10 lines of code. And you can just do the same thing that would have taken at least a couple of minutes before. Pretty amazing. Now, what I'm gonna show you is how you can make this even faster. So normally to run the script, you need to go to your terminal window and then CD into the appropriate folder where all of these programs reside which would take some time, obviously, if you wanna run this multiple times. But what you can do instead is code something called a shell script, which you can just basically run from this command line window, which opens up every time you open your terminal window. Essentially, for example, for my YouTube thing, is I can just go tsh youtube.sh and then give the link and it's just gonna download it. And the way you do that is pretty easy. You're gonna create a new .sh file, which is basically a file which you can run using your shell script directly from your command. You just do exactly what I do. What we're gonna do is go nano, which is this command line based text editor, and we're just gonna give it a name yt.sh, and the sh ending is really important here. We're gonna we go enter. We're gonna create this file. And basically here, all you do is you go cd, and then you copy the folder where your file Resides. The way you get this is you go to where you would normally run your Python code in your WD, which stands for present working directory. And you get the present working directory, you copy it. So basically what we're doing is once this file runs, the first thing it's gonna do is gonna CD, so change into the correct directory, and then it's simply gonna run the file. We're gonna go Python 3, and actually I almost forgot a very important part. At the start of these shell files, what you need to always include is this line, which is like hashtag, exclamation mark, slash bin, slash sh. It essentially tells the program what version of the shell or what program it needs to use to run this. Basically, you don't need to know any of that. Just include this line at the top of all your shell scripts. Then you do this, and 
You remember how for the YouTube program, we needed a command line argument that the program needed to access the link of your YouTube video as a command line argument. The way we do the same thing as a shell script is much easier. You just go dollar sign one. Essentially, that's all you need to do. What this is gonna do is once you input a command line argument on your terminal window, it's going to access it using this dollar sign one thing. And it's gonna know that that is actually the link that it needs to then feed into your Python program which will then do all the magic, which we did before. We go and save this, we go control X, it's gonna ask you if you wanna save, you're gonna Y, enter, then, now, this is where the real magic happens. You go gsh, the name of our file, oid.sh, quotation marks, link, quotation mark, boom, it shows the title, it shows the view, it's downloading it, let's see if it works. We go in that folder, and would you look at that? It's right there, pretty magical. And basically, you're gonna do this exact same thing for all your other files as well. You could go nano.pdf.sh, and you're just gonna go and basically do the same things. And I'll leave that to you as an exercise to do. I hope you find this video helpful. If you wanna access the code that I used, you can go down below in the description, you're gonna find it on my GitHub. But what I would obviously encourage you to do is use this as inspiration slash a starting point, and then based on your own needs, just go down to the documentation for all of these libraries to build the exact kind of either photo editor, PDF editor, whatever that you need, that you want, because that is the most exciting thing about coding is building projects, building things that you actually want to use. Maybe you don't even find these particular things useful, but just the mindset of looking for problems to solve and looking for libraries that might already have solved these problems. If you do that, you will be surprised how many things you can actually do with Python with very little code. If you wanna learn about even more exciting Python projects, I made this video about how I am automating my file management on my computer using a simple Python program. So if you wanna learn how to do that, go watch that video right after this one.